Welcome back to the 215. Uh, let me set up this premise here. Okay. Because I really want to go to this new place. Mm -hmm. I remember when kids who played video games, their parents would say, ah, you'll never make anything of yourself. Right. You know, get outside. You're, you're going to rot your brain. You need <laughs> to have it. some fresh air, what have you. Well, times have certainly changed. And there's a new place on Broad Street right across from the new police station okay. right there. It's called Nerd Street. What we do is unlock that access to the, this high-powered gaming equipment that also has all these ancillary benefits outside gaming, like education. We decided to build this location, which was 10 times the size of what we had in Northern Liberties, because we wanted to open it up to a larger scale. Now we have high schools all across Pennsylvania that are implementing high school esports teams. They're going to need a place for their state championships. There's colleges all across the country, I think it's over 500 now, that have esports programs that are recruiting and giving away scholarships. They're going to need showcase tournaments and all sorts of things that we're used to from traditional sports and you need a facility like this to be able to actually facilitate that. You can't have everybody just playing from home because you have limitations on what people can afford, people don't have the same equipment, my better computer might give me an advantage, my better internet might give me an advantage. Right now, the gaming demographic is a pretty massive and widespread demographic. Almost everybody plays a video game of some sort. And then you've got the youth that are growing up playing every day after school, all day. Those kids have thought of this and their parents have thought of this as a recreational activity. But now there's a productivity behind it. Well, not only are you training in skills and learning skills and communication and camaraderie the same way we do from sports, but now there's college scholarships and pro careers here. You know, the, the idea that I'm on a team of five players playing against another five players with a strategy to implement. We need to learn how to communicate. When we mess up, we need to recover quickly. We need to learn how to deal with and cope with that failure. All of those lessons are learned in video games, uh, and it's just a little bit more accessible than sports are. I think they both serve a, a really critical purpose in our society where they're going to be the reason that kids go to college and get career opportunities that they wouldn't otherwise get if not for sports and now video games. We have benefits for students that will give you free access for, you know, I think it's an hour a day right now uh, after school so you can come in and play. So anybody can walk in off the street and pay to play and come in and enjoy this. Um, we have summer camps, we have tournaments, um, we have all sorts of programming and events that you can sign up for and participate in or you can just walk in and play. You know, if you want to get started at home, you've got to buy one of these $3,000 computers, you know, these are $500 gaming chairs, $200 keyboards, $100 mice, and on and on, and then the games and the internet. And it's a barrier of entry that, you know, is limited. Uh, and so coming here, you get affordable access to that high-end equipment that you don't necessarily need to purchase at home. It's a safe haven and it's a productive output of your usage of your time and you're going to get something out of it, 100%. How rewarding is it to see kids kind of coming into their own as they take advantage of these programs? Seeing a kid go to a college because of an event that we created and they got seen at is the most rewarding thing that we can do here. Now I'm with Kevin Kelly, director here at Simeon. I, I envy your job. Oh, you and all the other car guys. <laughs> Good, I know. How long have you been here? Well, since we opened in 2008. Wow. Now, there are a lot of car stars at this museum, but this is the superstar. What are we looking at? Well, that's a 1964 Shelby Cobra Daytona. Uh, they built six of these. It's a purpose-built race car. Hold on. Only six in the world? Only six. This is the prototype. Uh, how fast would it have gone? Well, it did 150 miles an hour for 12 hours, including time for uh, fuel wind stops. So wow. the clock was running. 12 hours straight. All right, let's talk about the, the museum in general. Um, how many cars? Oh, about 75. Okay. Uh, any, any, any car top this one? Uh, it depends on your bent. This is okay. a favorite of uh, fans of American racing. All right. If you're into Italian cars, we have 8C Alphas, perhaps the finest uh, oh. sports car ever. If you love German cars, we have an S Mercedes that won the, the German Grand Prix at Nürburgring. Jeez. I remind everybody, too, Whose collection this was? I know we lost it about a month and a half ago. Yes. Dr. Simeon. Dr. Simeon, and this car tells so much about Dr. Simeon. His, his thing about cars was preservation. Mm -hmm. And he's been a preservationist his whole collecting career, about 50 years of acquiring these well, cars. I know his dad was a doctor too, who practiced up in Kensington. And I think Frederick himself, the son, was raised in Kensington. Yes. Uh, his dad was into car, I think he had four cars. 
his dad would be very proud. <laughs> he went from four cars and about eight thousand dollars to seventy-five. Right. Now, his father was more proud of his accomplishment as a medical person. A neurosurgeon. But as a car guy, the doc is the, okay. is the top. He's our star. Last thing. Every car in here you can start, it runs. We run everything. We run this car half a dozen times per year. About twice a month, we call that demonstration day. We'll put cars together to tell a story. For example, the uh, Targa Florio, a great race in Sicily with Alfa Romeos and Bugattis. So we put the cars together that are telling the story. Thank you. Oh, uh, thank you. This has been awesome being here. Uh, it's a pleasure having you.